All right, so welcome to Night Hacking at the Dev Nexus stage. Thank you. Um, we are live on Ustream now. We had some earlier issues with our, our streaming, but we, the nice folks at the Cobb Center here got it all worked out for us. And I'm joined by Jeff Prestes. Is that yes. the right way of saying your last name? Yeah, correct. Awesome. And you came all the way from Brazil just for this conference. Yeah, exactly. Not only for this conference, but also for Battle Hacking in Raleigh. It's a hackathon of, of a branch with PayPal. And uh, it's a great opportunity to join the guys here in, Dev, in DevNexus. Cool. So you're doing a couple events while you're in the US. So you're going to be talking at the conference here about Java native GPIO. So um, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Tell us, tell us what yeah. sort of things you've been working on. My, my presentation is going to talk about uh, how do you install a Java SE SDK on Raspberry Pi, and how could you create native Java applications? Uh, and, uh, Keep going. Yeah, Java native applications to Raspberry Pi to access a GPIO. So for instance, uh, in my demo, I will show how guys, for instance, called access mod, uh, activate a motor and, and no, a light, you know, how could you, for instance, you can turn it on and turn off lights in your home using Java, but, the, but using that native uh, Java library, you know, the device I.O. And they use it, you know, and the, instead of use Java micro, micro it's Java ME. Java, Java ME, you use, are going to use Java standard edition. Okay, so using the device access API? Yeah. That's part of Java SE. Yeah, exactly. It's an cool. open, jo open JDK project. Yeah, okay, very nice. And what do you think of the API so far? Have you been impressed with the design of them? Yeah, it's, it's good because you know it's 100% Java. You don't need to port anything or do need to use, for instance, all the library, other libraries, they use, um, it's kind of a Python implementation. It's only one layer, layer you have only one, one layer above Python. So yeah. it's only Java here. With Java device IO, you can, have, you can run 100% Java code. And now so uh, you, have a, you have a portability. You know, because, uh, for instance, if you use some other libraries that has in the market, you need, for instance, you need to, if you have want to go deploy your application in a bigger bone dev device, you need to rewrite everything and use another library. With Java, if you have device IO, it's the same code runs in several other devices, you know, several okay, other Okay, so boards. it gives you the same kind of, you know, write uh, once, write once, run anywhere. Exactly, <laughs> that's the point. Except for embedded. Yeah. Embedded devices instead of um, you know user yeah. interfaces. I think one thing Java is going is going back on his roots, you know, because begin at the beginning when they start to wrote Java is for for you know small devices. Yeah. So you are going back to roots, and of course that's what the idea. You know, you write just one code, Java code for running several several different appliances. Cool. So what sort of projects have you done with the Device Access API? Have you done anything cool? Yeah, I've done one thing that helped guys to make money. We are, we are, because I work for Braintree, our payment company. Yep. And then we are helping guys to make money selling candies. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tomorrow we show the guys here how to build a, a vending machine using Java. Nice. You no. Know? So, for instance, the guys here using brain, uh, brain, PayPal and Braintree, they were able to sell. For instance, you will be able to buy my, uh, some MMs. Uh, hopefully, you're giving me some bucks <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll be happy. Oh, that's I need great. some candy. Yeah. Huh? I need some sugar. Uh, okay. So, if you have a problem with sugar, I can teach you how to, for instance, turn on and turn off lights in your home using Java to, you know, the device, uh, device IO API. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I, I probably need to do that as well because we're, we're remodeling the office in the house. And since the walls are open, it's a good chance to yeah, amazing. rewire stuff. Yeah, and, and as you, for instance, uh, you're a specialist in uh, JavaFX, we can create, for instance, an interface in JavaFX. Uh, I can have a little it. touch panel on my wall. Exactly. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so I believe that with using JavaFX and device IO, you're able to create amazing applications with touch screens, devices. Cool. No, no, I definitely agree. I think that's the, the future of having portable exactly. embedded application frameworks. And there's a whole bunch of different boards available. So you mentioned the BeagleBone 
BeagleBone Black? Yeah. Or the original BeagleBone? Yeah, or both. actually, I haven't tried to go deep in the Beagle Bone. I have a, I'm, my projects in general was more focused on Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. But I, I, heard, I read some articles that device I works on the and that too. Okay. Have you tried any of the hard kernel boards yet, like the um, U3 or the? I mean, you know, fortunately, I didn't have a time <laughs> you know, because you can do a lot of stuff with Raspberry Pi nowadays that I have. A, have it try. Have it. Yeah, well, with the Raspberry Pi too, it actually has decent hardware now. Yeah. For the so processor, it's a quad core. Yeah, it's amazing. Now you can run Glassfish easily on Raspberry Pi. So if a lot of is a lot of processor resources that Glassfish runs very well in Raspberry Pi. So is that the Oh, we are back. Um, Steve, the other thing that I believe in the welcome future... To, welcome to live, yeah. live <laughs> broadcasting. <laughs> yeah. Other thing that I believe it will be in the future is in the interaction of, for instance, some Java uh, devices in running in the small single board computers and mobile applications, you know. So if, if you have an uh, MQT2 um, library, you can exchange information between, you know, um, between a, a mobile device and also an IoT device. And this, I believe, in the future, no, not only will revolutionary the industry, but also the commerce. The way that you buy Odar, you know, the service that you, you can get to. So uh, I believe the IoT, you know, it brings some new way and you know, give more uh, for uh, improve the people, the way the people buy stuff. No. Yeah, no, I mean, there's already a whole bunch of payment systems coming around, and they're based around cell phones, but I, I think embedded devices have a lot of potential there as well for creating different ways people interact and pay and um, having physical devices in, in your environment, which yeah. you can work with. Yeah, because everything is go right, uh, internet, because I believe in the past, that if you, that things start to get smart, yeah, and now the people, uh, as the people, uh, as the uh, the things are connected, they improve even more the interaction between them. You know, uh, maybe in the future, for instance, the as you search, as you have a shown in your application, uh, sorry, in your presentation, uh, in the future cars, you know, will be more, you know, autonomous, give her more information. And I believe the Java, you could be able to do this, this all this stuff in Java. Yeah, no, I definitely want my car to be driven using Java. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can get, for instance, nowadays with someone uh, from my car, I believe, it, I would love to have some HUD, you know, like in... Fly, in a yeah, yeah, like a heads-up display where you could interact directly. Yeah, and, because your GPS yeah, they, device is so small, so... They have, have some good, they have some good HUDs now you can hack and, and start using, and they, they work as display devices for um, any embedded platform. So yeah. that's, that's, I think that's something you can hack now you can actually build prototypes. Yeah, we can. We need to do. Definitely need to start to I'll, do something. I'll build you a case. There's my 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll That's get good. to work. Maybe by the end of Dev Nexus, we'll have invented something new. Excuse me. By the end of the conference, we'll invent something new. Oh, uh, hopefully we we'll hope have <laughs> something new. Yeah, uh, but at least I'm uh, hopefully some guys that uh, I watch my presentation will be able to start to make money with IoT too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. Nowadays we are. Uh, see, I believe in the nowadays is something that we can see a lot of stuff that people are start to research, but uh, definitely I believe that people would start to do something more commercial. I believe too. We have some nowadays better boards, and the Java is very mature for that. Cool. So it's been great chatting with you about some of the stuff you're doing with the Device Access API. Yeah, thanks doing for the API. And um, I think you know we'll we'll be bumping into each other a lot in the future because I'm playing with the same sort of stuff you are. Well, yeah. actually, we just finished yeah. our presentation today on the same sort of. Okay, stuff. perfect. <laughs> All right, okay. cool. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Stephen, for the invitation.